Now, uh, that's why the hype is, is the pitch that it is. They're trying to, the media here are trying to hype this thing up and say, well, look, now we've discovered a new enrichment facility. Well, we know about that enrichment facility for, for months. And now the Iranians are claiming that they're well within their rights under the treaties governing this kind of activity to announce the establishment of this thing because it's several, several months more before it gets uh, ready to enrich anything. So the hype is there, and the, the bottom line, uh, people you just need to realize that Iran is nowhere near. Iran is years and years away from a nuclear weapon. Okay, I'll repeat that one more time. Years away from a nuclear weapon. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe what the Israelis are saying. These are technical questions, okay? Now, when I did the President's Daily Brief, you know, I didn't write all the briefs. Obviously, I know who the right, I know who the good analysts were, the honest technical people, and and it was a it was a privilege to to put their stuff in readable form and give it to the president. Well, now I still know those folks, and I'm not getting this from a government's head. I'm getting it from pe people like Greg Thielman, who ran the State Department, the INR, the uh, research there, and the the intelligence outfit of the State Department, and was right. His people were right before the uh, Iraq estimate there in 2002. And he now writes for the Arms Control Association, and uh, it's the best stuff out there. Just uh, Google Arms Control Association, you'll see what Greg Tillman is putting together. All right, boil it down for us then. What does Iran really have? What are they really doing? And A, why can Israel have weapons? Why can Pakistan have weapons? Why is that okay? But Iran's nowhere near it. And we're hearing we got to put sanctions on them. We got to attack them. Uh, you know, they could they could kill us any minute. Well, um, Alex, it will be no news to you that there is something in this country that I call the Likud lobby. Uh, the Likud being the hard right uh, faction of the Israeli government, Israeli parties, and they have inordinate influence in this country. And if you were to ask why it is that Congress is preparing actually preparing as we speak to pass a law that would actually be a, an act of war uh, to interdict the supply of gasoline and, and such products to Iran. Why they are doing that? Well, <laughs> it's because uh, a lot of their money and a lot of their votes come from what I call the Likud lobby. Uh, people but say, why does Israel want to attack Iran? Well, you know, if you look at the Israelis and their, their uh, frame of mind, and I think it's a terribly myopic frame of mind. I care about what happens to Israel, and I think it's exactly the wrong policy. They think, they think that if they can sap the Iranian nuclear facility, as they did to the facility in Osirak in Iraq in 1983, then they could set the Iranians back go oh, five, ten years, perhaps, if they're allowed to do that. Now that's very myopic because. The Iranians, unlike the Iraqis in those days, the Iranians can retaliate. They can close the straits. They can uh, decimate our troops in, I in Iraq, and they can hit Israeli cities even now. Not with a nuclear weapon, but with lots of missiles, okay? So it would be bedlam if this happened, and yet the Israelis are trying to get our okay to let them do it. This is, this is lunacy, but uh, they have this kind of a frame of mind. Netanyahu, their prime minister in particular, that this must not be let happen and that they're going to delay it as long as they can. If it takes uh, an armed strike, uh, they'll do it. Now, the only thing that is preventing them from doing it at this point, in my estimation, is this. Admiral Mullen, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who is responsible for our troops and our security, has gone over to Israel this time last year and said, look, don't even think about it, okay? You fly your planes over our airspace in Iraq, we're going to shoot them down, okay? So don't even think about this, and don't, uh, don't think you can perpetrate the kind of incident like the Liberty incident back in June of 68, uh, because we remember that. I'm a naval officer, and that's just not going to happen again. Now, that was pretty gutsy, and that put the kibosh on what the Israelis were planning the following August, last August, not last August, but August of 08. Let me go back. We had uh, the Admiral that you just talked about, and then <laughs> it leaked. Uh, it also leaked 
that, and, and a New Yorker covered it, MSNBC covered it, Cy Hirsch talked about it. We'd all heard about how these radio calls were coming in. Iranian patrol boats attack, blow up the destroyers near the Strait of Hormuz. They're in the Gulf. And then it came out later that Cheney was discussing plans to paint up U.S. ships like Iranian patrol boats and have them attack our ships. Now, this came out a year after you on this show and other shows said, what I'm hearing from intelligence sources is they may attack our ships and blame it on Iran. Were you being given specifics? Because it's one thing to get this from Cy Hirsch a year after it happened, uh, now two years ago. It's another thing for you, and I remember the interviews a year before, to say that's what you were concerned about. Well, Alex, I wish I could brag about an inside source on this particular thing. I cannot. I was using what we in Army intelligence used to call the swag factor. You know what that is? No. That's a scientific wild-ass guess. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's thin slicing or it's uh, dead reckoning? Yeah, it's, you know, trying to put yourself in the position of the Israelis and what success they had with the uh, the incident there where they killed uh, 34 of our seamen there and, and uh, wounded 171 in, in June 8, uh, 1967. And, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about Moxie or, or Chutzpah. They were quite capable of doing that again, particularly if they had an ally in the vice president of the United States, which clearly they did. And when Cy Hirsch came out with that a, a year later, you can imagine my reaction. I said, wow, that was a good guess, McGovern. But it was just at that point a guess. Okay, we had uh, Bear on, the former CIA fellow for folks that don't know. Uh, Bear? Yeah, and, and, and he said two years ago, and I don't trust him as much as I trust you obvious, for obvious reasons, but he said, I'm worried about the Saudis staging a false flag to blame it on Iran, and then now we see more and more similar things coming out along those lines. What's your take on that? Well, Bob knows the area a lot better than I do, and I have great confidence in, in his uh, judgment. Um, you know, the Saudis are, are Sunni, the Iranians are Shia. Uh, it may seem like lunacy to us, but it matters a great deal in that area. And for the Iranians to become the preponderant power in that area... Well, the Saudis don't like that at all. Whether they would resort to this kind of provocation or not, you know, I don't know, but uh, Bob would be in a much better uh, position to speculate on that. Well, I mean, what is it like for you knowing the region, studying it, when they get up on the news and say Iran is backing al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, That when it's the opposite group, Shiite, Shuni, uh, arch enemies, you know, they, they fight more than they do with Christians or Jews, really, if you look at the statistics that I've looked at. I mean that's so. That's like saying the Dallas Cowboys are the are the New York Giants. I mean it, it, it's clearly two different groups. And then the famous case two and a half years ago uh, with uh, the president of Afghanistan and Bush says yes, Iran is funding Taliban and Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. And uh, Mohammed Karzai says, "Excuse me, Your Excellency, respectfully, but Iran's helping us. Their enemy is Al Qaeda. They're back on the news, as you know." saying that Iran is al-Qaeda when the last White House admitted they were using al-Qaeda-based groups to stage terror attacks inside Iran. Yeah. Well, in answer to your question, Alex, uh, I take this blood pressure medicine now, so <laughs> when I listen to this kind of stuff. But all kidding aside, you know, when, when Bush was allowed to mischaracterize, maybe a nice way of saying things, uh, all these very important developments and uh, the mainstream press, uh, people like uh, Charlie Gibson would just kind of say, oh, uh, I refer specifically to uh, Bush's famous exit interview where Charlie Gibson finally said, well, Mr. President, why did you really think you had to attack Iraq? And he said, oh, simple. Uh, Saddam Hussein wouldn't let the U.N. inspectors in. And Charlie Gibson said, oh, OK. And he goes on to the next question, you know. But he was letting the inspectors in. They were, they were combing through his palaces. They were interviewing his scientists one-on-one. -on -one. It was George Bush that threw the U.N. inspectors out two days before shock and awe. And Charlie Gibson let's get away with that. Let's get back to Iran. Here's the, you know, I told you about the estimate here. It actually appeared in November of, of 07. They started working on it in 06. 
And so November 07, this big shock, namely, that the NIE judges, and I used to chair these things, so I know what kind of work goes into this, high confidence that Tehran had halted a covert nuclear weapons program in the fall of 2003. What does the president say the following March? He says, quote, Iran has declared that he wants to be a nuclear power with a weapon to destroy people, including others in the Middle East, end quote. <laughs> you know, that's made up. You know, you make that kind of stuff up, but you shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. Iran never declared any such thing.